and that's, I guess, the most important. I can definitely hear you. Yep. All right. You'll have to let me know when you want to say something because I can't I'll, see your pencil waving. I'll jump up there and down. <laughs> right. I'll do yeah. something. I, okay. I get used to, you guys have trained me on certain protocols, you know, I'm not always good at it, but I'm trying. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the picture, but instead of calling my granddaughter, I just thought we ignore it tonight, so. That's okay. Right. All right. Um, Zach, you're there, right? Sanam? Yes. Okay. Let's uh, call the uh, regular city council meeting of Monday, August 9th, 2021 for the city of Dexter to order at um, 7.08, following our council workshop that ran a little over. Uh, so with the call to order, if we could uh, have our student rep, Alex, lead us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to and the to republic, republic for which it which stands, stands. One nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate that. Ms. Jones, if you would please call the roll. Okay, and remember, once again, this is where you are attending the meeting at in the city or otherwise. Council Member Aram. Yes, attending remotely from City of Dexter. Council Member Cousins. Yes, we uh, participating from the City of Dexter, Michigan. Council Member Fisher. Yes, um, I'm attending from, remotely from the City of Alma, Michigan. Council Member Griffin. Here, attending remotely from the City of Dexter, Michigan. Council Member Hubbard. Attending remotely from the city of Dexter, Michigan. Councilmember Michelle. Present, Dexter City, USA. Mayor Keogh. Present, participating remotely from my home in the city of Dexter, Michigan. Student Representative Gilbert. Present, remotely from Webster Township. And Student uh, Representative Aaron. Will not be present tonight. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. We're down to item C on the agenda, approval of the minutes. We have our regular city council meeting minutes from July 26, 2021. I could get a motion to approve, please. I move we approve the minutes as presented. Okay, moved by Ms. Fisher. I'll second. Second by Ms. Griffin, thank you both. Ms. Fisher, do you have any proposed changes or corrections? I do not. Ms. Griffin. Yep, I have two. On the on the bottom of page three under Michelle's report, and okay. the last bullet on that page, it says regarding the zoning ordinance update, comma, would like to come up with a time. I think maybe the, the word I, I would like to come up with a time, if Michelle can nod her head or um, that might be missing. Okay. And then um, on page six under my council comment, um, after the congrats to Justin, it says regarding the conflict of interest choices, look at it as how it works with our ordinances. If you could just replace that second sentence with, if there are concerns about what is or is not a conflict of interest, refer to the draft ordinances. Okay, That's other right. council member comments? Ms. Jones, you got everything okay? I will get it, yes, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, please call the vote to approve the meeting minutes with the couple of uh, corrections, please. Yeah, I just lost my, <laughs> my, my role here, just one. Oh, here we go. Okay, Michelle. Yes. Iram. Yes. Griffin. Yes. Hubbard. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Cousins. Yes. Keel. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Motion carries. The minutes are approved. Uh, we have one member of our public that has asked to speak under prearranged participation this evening. Um, Ella Danajanski. I hope I didn't okay. get that too far off. 
uh, close, but not quite. <laughs> please, uh, please say it correctly for us and Sorry. give your name and address for the record, if you would. Yes, and I will. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Um, so first, my uh, address um, is 3458 Broad Street. My name is Ella. My last name is my last name is pronounced Dunaiski, like Dunais Lee. Mm -hmm. It's the best way I can help everyone with my last name. The J is silent, so it tends to always trip people up. So just a little bit about me. Um, and I thank you very much for letting me come and speak to the city council. Um, and I will just sort of read from some of my notes and uh, provide what I think is a uh, just a request, but also one that was presented at the Planning Commission because I did uh, email in advance uh, to Justin Breyer. So this was all something that I didn't just, you know, happenstance make a decision. I had been sort of working uh, to try and talk to neighbors and try and present all the information at one time. So basically, again, um, my husband and I live at 3458. Where is that? Uh, directly across the street from the historic train station. Uh, we are the home that's the dark gray home um, that was originally a 1920s bungalow. And uh, we um, renovated it in uh, over the course of the last two years. Uh, but we've owned the home since 2004. Um, and I happen to have lived for a long time um, in Lock Alpine. So my kids grew up and of course all both went to Dexter high schools and uh, grade schools, high schools. Um, I have been very impressed uh, with Dexter from uh, way back when, but what I wanted to bring to everyone's attention was a little bit about why I come to the council, but also why it's important for me uh, to represent um, the residents of Broad Street, uh, which have formally asked me to sort of make a presentation. Um, so firsthand, I have been very involved in my background uh, in the governance of not only Lock Alpine, but nonprofit organizations, uh, serving in Lock Alpine with 440 homes, 10 miles of road, um, I served both as uh, president of the Lock Alpine Association. I was involved with um, the social chair, the newcomers group, um, heading up the 4th of July, running the budgets, and actually involved as well with when we did the dredging of the two lakes in Lock Alpine. So giving you a little bit, I'm not just someone that stands by and tries to throw in two cents and then leave. I'm very active and have been active. In my professional life, I serve currently as the director of college counseling, and I have been involved in corporate world as well, serving as a national sales manager and a product manager. So why I'm here today is because I emailed Justin, um, but prior to emailing Justin, I when we moved here February 2019, just as coronavirus hit us all very hard, and everything came to a shutdown, of course, everybody and roads and activity came to a real standstill. However, over the course of when we've observed and watched and as everything is trying to get back in, in full swing, um, we as neighbors on Broad Street have spoken and there are several major concerns and issues that have arisen, which then led to this email and then the subsequent sort of conversation. So number one, the excessive speeds um, that seem to be a very prevalent part of Broad Street. Uh, the young man who lives across the street from us happens to work at the pizza place at the top of the street, uh, Cottage Inn. Everyone at Cottage Inn calls it the drag strip. So I'm not giving you anything other than what's already been stated. Broad Street seems to have become the street where everything and everyone likes to gun it and go. They gun it from the stop sign, rolling through it. And I didn't want to send it to you because it's a video, but two, just recently in my yard, observed two gravel haulers that just completely back to back, no stop sign observance, and just roll through the stop sign as other cars are coming across from Huron Street. 
Um, these are just things that are constantly observed by all of us on Broad Street. Uh, the stop sign I know is set back too far and there's a lot of conversation about that particular uh, area, which I know is going to be addressed. I do understand that. And I know that that's something that is going to be um, taken up because it's been on the agenda for a long time. But the speed, the, the excessive speed, the known fact that's, that truckers um, literally downshift instead of putting on their brakes, and um, I know from corporate world what downshifting sounds like. It sounds a lot different than putting on your brakes. Um, but in this case, there's one traffic sign stops, uh, sorry, a speed sign. It's at 25 mile an hour and it sits on the train. Just to give you a reference, it's on where the train station is and it's up past fourth. It sits really quite tucked in and so it's the only stop, the only um, speed limit sign on the entire Broad Street. Um, so number one, it's not observed. Number two, the excessive speeding has been noted, but in the recent uh, months, one of the real outlying factors has been when you're trying to cross the street, um, just to be able to talk to your neighbor, you have to shout to be able to talk to the neighbor across the street because the truck's rolling by. But more importantly, um, the speed. And one in particular an instance that I observed, which was really quite horrific, is so the driver is driving on Broad Street and a car comes up from Huron, runs across the railroad tracks, and decided that that car in front of him or her was not going fast enough. So he literally came across the yellow line into the oncoming traffic to pass the truck or pass the car, rather, that was going too slow. So there's enough width there for individuals to take speed and make it their own sort of speed. Uh, truckers consistently have very excessive noise, um, starting at, of course, at 5.30 in the morning, which gravel haulers I know do not go to the um, little party store, nor do they go to the dentist office on my street, nor are they going to the other business, the funeral home. These are gravel haulers that are 5.30 in the morning flying up the road. And of course, the ordinance is not exactly um, adhered to. So there's a noise ordinance, um, which I don't believe that it's been enforced, excessive speeds, the lack of signage. And as a result, um, there seems to be a, a, just a, a, a total lack of regard for individuals and residential. I understand the complete completed streets was done recently. And I looked at our map. I know that I'm a village residential. I am not a highway or a truck byway. I am a village residential street. And I would think that at some point we would have sheriffs looking at that. Yes, I have observed sheriff parking in the new city hall potential purchased land um, and stopping individuals who cruise through the stop sign, not on my street, but on Huron. As they come up, um, they turn left and all of a sudden they're flying over and that's when he stops them and gives them sort of a warning. Um, so the sheriff controlling it or at least stopping it, there's no observance of regular speeds. Everyone is taking it at their own pace. One time uh, when that was requested, we did notice a, a signage that went in that allowed individuals to see how fast they were going. It was there roughly for maybe two weeks and removed. It has never been brought back. Um, I drive in, I work in West Bloomfield, so I drive every day. Um, and so when I go out on our main street, I notice that everyone has decided that on Main Street and passing through town, they definitely know the sheriff is out. So 25 miles an hour, maybe 30, they have all slowed down, but not Broad Street, no. Broad Street again is known as the dragway. So I wanted you to all know that we have small children, we have residents, we have families, we have children playing, uh, we have individuals that uh, really enjoy the street, uh, but I do feel that this has been a major concern and I wanted to bring it to the attention of the city council. Um, so the issues being safety, the issues being res village residential. And I know that the other concern that seems to have kind of gotten by the wayside is border to border trail. 
Well, when border to border trail was not even conceived by the council, and then now has come a beautiful part of Dexter, I watch in front of my home, individual bikers clubs that roll up from Huron Street, individual families who have no clue. And I hear them shouting, which way do we go? I don't know. And they're shouting at each other while traffic is oncoming. Okay, so there's a lot of different variations of ways in which community, individuals, families enjoying it are trying to engage with this beautiful city, but it just so happens right on this street becomes sort of a free for all. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we understood that I'm not here to sort of make major a request other than what was brought to my attention, which is what Justin had suggested that I actually um, come to the council. And one of the things that was requested uh, or that he suggested is that I actually ask for a formal traffic study to be done. Um, I know that the traffic study is something that um, really allows us to look at it. And over a 10 year period, 15 year period, there would be data taking a look at something that provides us with a way to engage and making decisions. I understand that the businesses on the north side of, this, of the city are sort of our main concern. Now, I also know that a lot of businesses are not fully functioning and the gravel haulers and the downshifters and the speeders and the truckers, they do have their routes. Yes, and designated truck route does help. But uh, when I contacted the actual city, um, the, the transportation department, they told me that we as a city made that designation that that is a truck route through our city. It used to be on Central. However, when Central was first deemed, um, the, the city decided that the uh, city would like to engage and include a larger portion of the Monument Park, that turn was not gonna be made. And so now it had to move to Broad Street. So when you're sitting at the Beer Grotto, when you're sitting at any of the restaurants, you're hearing all of this noise and traffic come through, sit at that light and then wait to get to Broad Street light. And then when they finally make it past Broad Street light, then they're gunning it and coming down and they know that they're headed out of town. And again, they have to make another left back onto Central to then cross over and go to their route. These gravel haulers are not necessarily people that I have a, you know, definite, you know, uh, necessarily want to say that there's something negative about hauling gravel. I get it. But in terms of overall ordinances, I feel like there's noise pollution, safety, volume, traffic control. These are the things that I as a resident would like to bring to the city council's attention. Um, I would like to make sure that we have an opportunity to work together and again, um, just citing what jo Justin had said that the city council has the authority um, to have a traffic study to be conducted and that I have to formally request uh, to pursue this uh, recommendation and to request the, um, the formal study to be done. And therefore it would allow me to be someone that would be available to bring you further information uh, uh, from the residents. There's all the residents that I've spoken to um, said, please make sure to let them know that I'm not the only one, um, but ultimately they wanted somebody to be a spokesperson. So I, I just at least bring this to your attention. And um, I know that in closing, I've done a lot of research and understand that it's not an easy task to even look at something like this, but it is an important task because now within the next 10, 15 years, you will conduct and you will be able to provide the most beneficial route for both pedestrians, truckers, uh, individuals, neighborhoods that we would like to continue to bring both the, the safety issues to, to light, but also how we can collectively work together. And I feel as though this would be the most important piece um, that you should be able to note from my, my recommendation and my request. Um, again, I'm not alone on this and I'm asking for the traffic study to be done. Um, I do know that there is a formal uh, proposal request by the Michigan Transportation, uh, which I've done some research and they're looking for those uh, to be submitted no later than uh, late September, early October. 
And um, in the end, I'd like to ask the city to uh, look at removing the truck route designation. Um, and that would be coming off of Broad Street uh, and looking at other options, possibly some of the roundabouts that have been built um, and looking at ways in which we can healthily survive the next 10, 15, 20 years with the growing um, city that we are. Um, so I welcome any questions or welcome any other comments, but that is my formal proposal and would love to be able to get a chance to talk with you further, but that is where my request comes to you. So um, questions, anybody have any questions? Ella, thank you for your presentation. Um, You're welcome. Council, does anybody have a question for Ella at this time? Well, I'll, I'll jump in. Paul, Paul Cousins here. Um, you know, this goes back for to when we got our new water lines in mm -hmm. and sewer lines in from the industrial park and from the um, the, the uh, water tower. And as they came down uh, on on Baker to Main Street there, uh, there, was, there was considerable droppage there. They had to go very low in that area there. And um, the city had already purchased then uh, the two houses that were there on the park at that time. They demolished them and uh, they decided that there was nothing that they would do with those at that point in time. And then there are those that did not want the park to be reduced in size. Well, there was not, that, that was a, a false scenario because there weren't parks, there were two houses there. But the park commission at that time convinced the city to put in, uh, I don't know if they ever formally did it, to be quite honest, but to put in the additional park that went from where the park ended to the to the parking lot of, uh, which is now the WISD uh, Learning Center there. And so that is the time and when it had to be changed because when the new park and the downtown was redeveloped there, uh, the curve that truckers had to take around the turn at the cross from the Dairy Queen there was much too short to do that for trucks and they would have had to go so far into the left lane to make mm -hmm. a right hand turn there that it was impossible to do anything else except what they decided to do and that's to go down to the broad street light make a right and go all the way through town there uh, when Central Street was the designated truck route all the way through town. There's a number of people who lived on, on Central Street at that time that had enough influence on the council at that time to uh, change their attitude of that and uh, ended up uh, voting to make the truck route on Broad Street rather than Central Street because that's where they lived and their ox was being goaded then, not the people on Broad Street. Uh, we all know that uh, it was did not make a lot of common sense to take that piece of property, change the structure of it, and then send all of your truck traffic downtown to make another stop at a stoplight, make a right-hand turn, and go all the way down Broad Street, and then have to come back to Central to get over the, the bridge. Yep. Uh, so there was a number of decisions made years ago that caused all that, uh, those issues. And um, we're living the problem with it now. Uh, my suggestion uh, would be that we uh, heavily enforce, we can do this, heavily enforce the traffic issues that the young lady has been talking about. Uh, that will stop a good portion of this speeding, noise, and everything else. Downshifting, we know all what that is, okay? 
but it may not stop everything, but it could stop a good portion of it. And the trucking companies can be immediately identified of who they are and sent warnings to the company that this is not something we're gonna allow in this city. It has, a, you're coming through a residential section and you're causing havoc, both noise as well as uh, with the, the residents that live on that, uh, that street. I've seen it, know all about it, know about the bikers making the left-hand turn on the broad from, from uh, uh, Huron Street on the broad street. Those all have occurred because of this issue right here. Uh, the decision has been made long ago. Uh, it could be corrected. I don't think it would be easy to be corrected now, but you could purchase the property there, there where the intermediate school is, put a road through there. We have plenty of right away on our side and we could put that road straight through again. And you would just re-say, well, well, doesn't that make sense to have a road go straight through instead of go to, the, to your left and then to your right and then to your right again and then to your left again to get through town? with all those stops that I just identified? And the answer was yes, it would be. But it's gonna take some will of the council uh, to have that done. And now we're proposing another road uh, that's going to give it a different feel, which will only, in, in my opinion, uh, increase the speed of that there because they're gonna have a nice way to swerve right into that street on Third Street with no stop sign or anything else. Um, I, I, I don't know anything else I can say, but that's the history of how that all happened. Um, uh, and I, I'll just give you one other quick little story that because of my restaurant and the times that I had at times I would go down the, in the afternoon and watch them dig into that area there for the sewer line. It was pretty fascinating for me. We were like 21 foot deep and at about, at about uh, 15 feet they had a, had a pure streak of pure white sand. So we know that there was something going on there during the glacial areas that laid that material down there. And so uh, as I stood there one day, I saw a guy down at the bottom of that pit and he was getting ready to drill a hole in the water line that went, uh, went through that area there. And I asked him what he was doing. He says, yeah, we just got an order that we uh, are gonna put a water line in here. And I said, for what? And he said, for a new bathroom. I said, a bathroom? He said, yes, it's gonna be a public bathroom up in the park. And I said, who gave you permission to do that? He said, well, I don't know who gave permission, but." That lady standing across the street brought the money to my boss and gave it to him so that he could bribe the people or bribe it or con the people into putting that in and they would get paid for it. Even though the, the engineer objected to it, they still did it. And I told them that they had two choices to stop. And if they didn't stop that there that I would call in the free press, Detroit News and the Ann Arbor News immediately to come and show what they were doing to this to this area here, with no permission, no no information from about it in the council, doing anything like that, um, and that that was that was almost put in there to put a uh, a bathroom right in the middle of that park, uh, really out in the center, close to the center of it. And it was just unbelievable that they tried it, tried to get away with it, but they did because I just happened to be out there that day when they were going to put in uh, the toilet, the bathroom, uh, that they had not got any approval for, but that they did try to get, uh, sneak it in. And uh, I could give you the names of the people, I won't do that now, but I give you the names of all the people that were involved in it. And it was our, it was our present engineering company that was involved in that. I, I 
All it, can I just add, I just want to say that I have lived here long enough and I know that Mo before Monument Park uh, was actually reoriented and, and extended, um, there was a gas station where the Monument Building is. I've lived here long enough. I have driven through this town. I love this town. I want it to be the safest, most incredible place to live. But I think we have to look at rerouting. And right now, I'm asking to please put together the best opportunity for the next 20 to 30 years so we're not redoing this a, a second and a third time because to me the benefit of having the wonderful village residential designation that I live on and all of us want to enjoy we want to be able to stop the speeders we want to be able to stop the truckers these gravel truckers are not coming to the businesses north of us they're not they're running they literally know we're a shortcut and we're a city, they don't spend their money here. They literally are, we should put up a toll and collect the money from them. We should then be able to be a lot faster in terms of building new roads. But I'm just mentioning that I think it's time that my request and I come to the city and I'll be ready to continue to work with you all because I do believe in the process and I do believe in the, the general public should be part of the ongoing conversation. So I really thank you for that. Thank you for your time this evening, Ella. Thank you. We are down to item E on the agenda, approval of the agenda. Move we approve the agenda as presented. Moved by Fisher, thank you, Donna. I second. Second Donna. by Sanam, thank you. Before we, um, any discussion on the agenda? Anyone need to declare a conflict of interest? Okay, seeing none at this time. Obviously, if, if something, if you feel, or you, come, you find out later that you have one, feel free to bring it up later on the agenda uh, as well. But uh, seeing none at this time, Ms. Jones, if you call the vote to approve the agenda, please. Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Cousins? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Rab? Yes. Keo. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. We are down to item F. We have no public hearings this evening. Item G is non-arranged participation. Is there anyone on the call that would like to speak under non-arranged participation? If so, please use the raise hand feature. Seeing none, we'll move down to item H, which is communications. We have our regular meeting calendar in the packet. Not sure if there's any updates, if anyone has any updates to the meeting list. Uh, Jamie, I see your hand went up. Yep. Uh, da, 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 page nine, let me get there. I think we might just need to update our city council times if we're bringing that from now forward, they're gonna be at seven o'clock. And yeah, then once, once we get it passed, we'll do that for sure. Right, okay, so, right, because we didn't take action. Um, and then maybe we would need to add the work session that we're having on the 23rd. That's all I have. Okay, sounds good. Other comments on the meeting list? Okay, seeing none, our first report tonight is from our public services superintendent. Dan, welcome. Hello, everybody. Dan. Yeah. I provided a two week written report for you, and I was wondering if you had any questions on that. Dan, I had one question. Uh, I don't think it's in the report necessarily, but what's the status of that large tree that's down on the uh, my, on Mill Creek, just uh, opposite the troll? I met. Uh, I met with Justin on that and I called Gino to come out. We've actually got uh, two trees down. We've got uh, the one that's up high where it broke off, where you can see from the, the trail there. And also we've got another big one that's down uh, next to our outfall. That's actually completely across the river. Hmm. I know Justin, I don't know if Justin wants to speak on this. He spoke to- uh, uh, Here on River Watershed Council. Um, they, they have a uh, woody debris management team. Um, so they, they will paddle the river with 
chainsaws and um, clear out those sections that um, um, have become impacted by by moving fallen fallen trees. Um, they indicated that uh, they could clear out the portions that were already in the creek, um, but they were they had concerns about them trying to do the work to to clear the tree that is is snapped in half, um, just due to the height of of where it, it broke off. So I met with Justin and I talked to him. Gino um, said for a couple thousand dollars, he could remove the one. Um, we have a little access door um, at the wastewater plant, the one down that's by the outfall. Um, the other one he, we can't get access to, big enough equipment to get in there because obviously that's a lot larger tree. Uh, so I talked to Justin about uh, getting a quote to put a new gate in or a bigger gate so we can get some bigger equipment back there along the river. Uh, we potentially, we've really never had to deal with this for the over 30 years I've been here. But after I went back and observed and looked and talked to Justin, this is something that's that uh, is going to continue to happen. When the rest of these big trees are going to fall over, we have a lot leaning. Um, but in the future, we're, if, if we're going to take this responsibility on ourselves, we're going to need to get access back there. So I thought we'd start with, uh, with that uh, getting the gate and trying to figure out how much it's going to cost to get some kind of roadway back there. And then there's trees down all over on the backside of that, uh, the fence at the wastewater treatment plant. But there's only two that are actually affecting the ability of canoers and kayakers to get down, to get down Mill Creek. It's, okay, it's just in, in, in a really challenging spot. Right. And if anybody from council would ever like to come down and take a look at it, it's very challenging back there because, you know, in the winter when we, we there are big storms, the water comes up, it comes up, you know, 10 feet behind the gate of the wastewater plant, floods that area out, it stays flooded back there, you know, throughout the winter. Um, so it's really hard for them trees to uh, to live through that. So we have a lot of a lot of dead stuff back there. Okay, well, I just think it's important that we help take care of making sure the water can get down there. You know, right. So I appreciate the efforts on that, and the, look for more information in the future. Um, I also wanted to say that I think the uh, elimination of that invasive species, the mustard plant that was along the path, at least the partial removal of that, has significantly improve the visibility for walkers and bikers, at least on the first half that's been done, Dan. I don't know if your team did that directly or- Actually, or what, but... Justin was it, he, uh, I was looking into it obviously, but <laughs> want to go ahead and help with that, Justin. He's the one that uh, put it put it in place and got it done. Yeah, I, I reached out to, to, to our invasive species management vendor plant-wise and um, they were able to, to come out pretty quick and, and knock it out over the course of two days. Good. Thank you. It, look, it looks great. Jamie? Yeah, can I just request a point of privilege? I need to get uh, another charger for my computer. So if I could be excused for just long enough to do that. Oh, but sure. The meeting can go on, but I that's where I'm going. Yeah. Understood. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Dan? <clears throat> Paul? I'll call on you. I just can't see you. Anything for Dan? Oh, I'm okay. Okay. Um, okay, we'll keep moving. Our next report then. Dan, thanks for you and your team keeping up things going on. I, I, you're all prepped for Dexter days. Absolutely. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is our uh, community development manager, Michelle. Good evening, council. How is everyone tonight? tonight? Excuse me. Good. Excellent. Excellent. So um, I have no verbal updates for you. So please let me know if you have any questions about my report. Let me flip around here. I don't see any hands coming up. Uh, I, I guess I do. Just one quick second. I got to go to the second page here. All right. Question is, on item number one, care, care to cure final combined site plan. Yes. Okay. Now I'm a citizen, I pick this up. I look at the packet 
uh, I don't know where care to cure is. There's no, as I could see, there was no address there, nothing that indicated to where this was in the city at all. It did mention a couple of roads, I think, extra and Arbor corridor. But other than that, I, I don't think I could have found out what this site was. Am I making an assumption or am I not, can't see it? I can make sure that I add addresses in the future, Paul. <laughs> so where is it? Give me an address now. Is at 7394, 7394 Dexter Ann Arbor Road next to Morning Star. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Zach? Yep, uh, we'll get this later on, but I it's in here, so I figured I'd start the early question. Do you know, does Millennium Place have a rooftop patio? No, they do not have a rooftop patio. Okay, I ask that because my observations are that great cities have rooftop uh, patios. Would it be possible them, for them to add it if they want to, or would they have to go through the site plan process again? They would have to go through the site plan process again, Zach. That's all, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that's an interesting question. Other questions for Michelle? Okay, Michelle, thank you for your good work. Um, thank you. Are there any board commission reports that need to be mentioned for any of the major committees slash boards that we're on? Any comments for anybody? Before we move down to uh, city manager report? Okay, seeing none, uh, we're down to I-5, Justin. Uh, just a couple of quick things for you. Um, first is uh, just earlier today, um, Dan and I set up a, a date for Jamie to come down to the wastewater treatment plant um, to do a facilities tour. Um, and we're looking at uh, Thursday the 19th. Um, I know Zach, you had indicated that you also wanted to uh, set up a date um, and we can have that conversation offline. Um, but if there's anybody else who is interested in taking a tour of any of our facilities, um, just reach out to me and uh, we can uh, work with Dan to, to put together a date. Um, the uh, Here on Waterloo Pathways Initiative uh, just announced uh, a soft opening of their B2B trail.org website. Um, so it's a new website that uh, has a bunch of maps and uh, various information on the segments of the border to border <laughs> trail. Um, including those that are under construction. And then um, Michelle and I have been sitting in, uh, we just sat in on a webinar today and we have a couple more that we're gonna be sitting in on uh, for additional grant funding through uh, the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, they've released um, six or seven different um, grant opportunities um, and we may be potentially eligible for two or three um, and you know, it, it, there's a variety of different things that grants could be put towards. Um, one of them is uh, construction related activities. So um, it seems like it could be water, sewer, streets, um, but uh, we're working on, on gathering additional information uh, on those grants. <clears throat> and that's all I got for you. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Uh, Jamie. Yeah, I yeah, I think our, our meeting is the uh, Thursday, this coming Thursday, the 12th. Oh, the sorry. Yep. The, the, the Thursday, the 12th. That's okay. So if anybody else wants to join or however, just want to let people know it's the 12th. Gotcha. Thank you. Any other questions for Justin? Okay. Um, I'll move on to my report. Uh, just wanted to expand on a um, couple of things. One, the, the closing for the new city offices is set for Wednesday. It's a pretty exciting thing. Um, we're doing that in the afternoon. Um, so I wanted to, to highlight that and note that. And then on Thursday, the 12th, <coughs> in my report, I had a, a meeting noted with Mike Penn um, or invited by Mike Penn 
to meet a company called Contour Companies who's interested in the 3045 Broad Street project area. Uh, I don't know anything about Contour Companies, but Mike is a new DDA member and he is in the real estate biz business and has expressed an interest in introducing that company to Dexter. Uh, I did send a meeting invitation out to Justin and Michelle and Doug Finn of the DDA, our chair of the DDA. Um, since writing this report last um, Wednesday, uh, that meeting has been canceled or is being rescheduled for the week of the 18th or attempting to be rescheduled for the, the week of the 18th. So that's not gonna occur uh, this coming Thursday. I will be happy to let everybody know if it gets rescheduled, but it, it won't be this week. So uh, I think what we're, what we're seeing there is uh, some interest in next steps for 3045 Broad. Uh, Michelle, I think we'll, we'll recall that um, one of the council member or one of the DDA members, Don Darnell, asked that the 3045 Broad Committee be convened uh, here in the future so we could kind of talk about where we are in the process. Um, the answer to that question is that all agreements with Norfolk have really expired. So it really behooves the city to decide whether they want to continue to partner or, mm -hmm. um, or, or move forward. But I, I wanted to just mention that, that that meeting was an invitation by Mike Penn and I'm I've accepted there, I originally accepted the meeting, but um, it, it's gonna be rescheduled. So it won't be this week. If I learn anything, I'll be happy to report back at the next meeting. Uh, does anybody have questions for me? Jamie, hand? Yeah, and I'm sorry if we, if you answered this question already in the past. The reason the city is involved at all with that property, so we own that property. And the reason is because we wanna have some control in how it's developed. Well, yeah, so, so, so good, great question. I'm, and I'm happy to always, I never know how much context to provide. When, when the DDA agreed to buy that property, um, and this is, this is the property between Broad Street and Mill Creek Park, they, that was, the property was owned at that time by Bill Tupper. And that was the former DAPCO site. And when DAPCO moved out to the industrial park in the early 80s, he retained control of the property and leased it out to different users. There were multiple businesses in that, uh, that building. Uh, the DDA bought the property in 2008, closed on it in 2012 because there were lease agreements that were, were four years out and the DDA did not want to be in the managing lease business. So the, the, uh, the DDA bonded and sold uh, bonds to buy that property uh, the original price was 1.6 million that was negotiated at, at the time. As part of the due diligence, uh, we discovered that there was some contaminated soil in and around the building. We, uh, we negotiated the purchase price down from 1.6 to 135 and completed the purchase of the building in 2012. Uh, the DDA's initial goal was to sell that property. There were four sale signs put up at both ends, one up where the curve at uh, Forest and Jeffers is, and another sign, I think, down uh, near where the parking lot is, where people park for the trail. Um, and for a, a good period of time, the DDA received zero interest while that was on the market. It might have been on for a year or a year plus. I can't remember the time frame, Jamie, that it was up. <clears throat> so there, there at, at that point in time, the DDA's goal was to sell it. Uh, subsequent to that, the small little residential properties where the gravel parking lot now are across the street from this property uh, became up for sale and the DDA bought those with the help of the city um, <clears throat> to, uh, you know, to have a larger amount of area in the same location. Um, so is the reason that we're, that we partnered with Norfolk because we wanted control? I would say partially. I think that after not being able to sell it directly to somebody, the city decided the next best thing was to partner or try to partner with somebody and, and create a vision for the use of that property. And there was a couple attempts to do that. The latest partner was Norfolk. Um, there was another company called, uh, Foremost. Um, foremost, right? 
yeah, foremost that, that had a limited uh, agreement with the city or time to do the same thing. Ultimately, the city and foremost worked on the same page with the objective for the land. So the city and uh, restarted the process and Norfolk was the selected company to, to go through the visioning process with. Um, they, I believe have, you know, I believe we came up with a pretty good concept. There was quite a bit of public participation in that. Um, so that there are, there are reasonable concepts for the use of the property, but uh, that's the long answer with the context to your question that, uh, yeah, I think the reason we're holding on to it is because we had wanted to have a little bit of control. It doesn't mean that this board or another board couldn't change their mind and decide that, you know, they just want somebody else to own the property. That help at all, Jamie? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a website which talks about all the previous public participation, and that's helpful. Uh, yeah, I could, I could talk to staff more, Justin more, if I have other questions about about it. But that's helpful. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. The, the 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 good. The really, you know, the good thing is we're already at uh, 2021. I think in seven years those bonds are paid off. <laughs> which is hard to believe that the 20 year period will have, uh, maybe I'm off, maybe it started in 2012, but I think it was 20, 2008. Anyway, we're, we're getting close. We're more than halfway through. So anyway, it, what, I, what I want, the, the, the noticeable point about including it in my report is that there's, there's other people that are now asking questions about the property. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be transparent in that and make council aware of that fact. Uh, I'll also be disclosing that to the, the DDA on uh, in my reporter on Thursday of next week when we have the DDA meeting. Um, I'm sure Michelle can cover it too. And, and I'm hoping Mike Penn brings it up uh, given that he's on the DDA. So uh, might come up from him first. John, we also owned the empty parking lot there at the corner of, uh, the, of Broad and... Um, Grand. Grand Street there too, that has been just a gravel parking lot for a while. So we own that property there. That's right. So my, the question I had, I have two questions. One, did I hear during the early statements here that Norfolk has backed out and do, does not want any more activity from- No, that, 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 has, that has not been confirmed, at least by my ears. I have not heard anybody at Norfolk say that. It's just that when we were going through those visioning sessions, the agreement that we had with them to partner had a time limit. They were limited. And at the time they seemed like a lot of months, but it's probably been, it's been several years since we, you know, engaged them on that. Um, I think some of this council will recall that about a year ago or maybe 15 months ago, they had indicated that they were working on, on agreements with additional property owners on forest with the idea of potentially bringing a site plan forward um, for a portion of, of the vision that was drawn up for that, that area. But to my knowledge, nothing has, has come forward yet. Okay, that was my second question. Do they still have conversations with those two landowners there? I think it might be three, Paul. Yeah, I think it might actually be three of them, but I'm not, I'd have to ask them. Uh, All right. Sean. You've answered yeah, Michelle. No. So I can I can follow up on I think the question Paul was going to ask. Um, <clears throat> shortly after Mr. Lafere spoke to council, um, either earlier this year or toward the end of last year, when he had announced that um, they were close to if they hadn't already gotten um, agreements with the property owners, one of the property owners was in the city paying a, a, a water bill. Um, and he did confirm that um, he had signed a contract um, to sell the property to Norfolk. They had a, a three to five year sort of window in which to do that. It's just the one property that you know of. I think next door as well. Next door, correct. Okay. Yeah, it's at least two properties, Paul. Yeah. I didn't know there was a third one involved. That, that's quite a ways down. But no, thank you for your answers. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. 
Any other questions for me on anything? Okay, I thought we just wanted to say, I thought we had a good good start to our um, our workshop today. I'm pleased that we got the organizational matters worked out and look forward to continuing the dialogue on the council rules. So um, we will get that uh, put back in front as a six o'clock workshop for the next meeting. Um, item I-7 at the top of page three of the agenda is council member reports. Uh, there are none in the packet, but uh, is there anybody, anything that anybody needs to say at this point of the agenda? Seeing none, um, there are five items on the consent agenda. I'll make a motion that we approve the five items listed on the consent agenda, bills and payroll in the amount of $304,355. And I can't, oh, 12 cents. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, uh, the wastewater treatment plant boiler repair services from um, Purvis and Foster at a cost not to exceed $9,580. Purchase of the brush cat attachment for the bobcat not to exceed $7,105.67, 63 cents. Um, the recommendation from the Parks Commission to accept the donation of an accessible playground swing and and also the acceptance of the 21-22 budget document. A okay, motion by Ms. Fisher. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Griffin. Thank you both. Ms. Jones, please call the vote to approve the five items on the consent agenda. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Arab. Yes. Cousins. Yes. Griffin. Yes. Hubbard. Yes. Keo. Yes. Uh, thank you. Motion carries. The consent agenda has been approved. Uh, item K, old or, or soon to be unfinished business. Uh, K1 is consideration of conflict of interest ordinance. Starting on page 51 of our packet. And again, the, um, the requested action on page 52 is for us to select an ordinance with or without edits so that we can uh, move forward in the process. That process being defined, at least on page 52, as sharing the draft ordinance with the city attorney and the city boards and committees. And then come back in to council at the September 13th meeting to set a public hearing for October 11th. Uh, Ms. Griffin, I see you have your hand up. Yep, I would move to advance the ordinance beginning on page 63 and the packet to the next step in the process. Okay, well, it's on page 63. Let me just pan down a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there a second? Zach, I see you have your hand up. Yes, there is a second from me right now. Thank you, sir. So motion by Griffin, second by Michelle's. Any discussion by council? Paul, I'm gonna assume you're gonna talk to me if you need to say anything. I didn't yep, hear I will. Thank oh, you. Zach, Zach, I see your hands up. Sorry for holding. If Mr. Cousins needs to speak, I'll let him go first. No, no, I'm okay for now. Well, I was gonna say, I know that some folks, this feels a bit bigger than, than what they, they feel comfortable with. Um, a couple things I like about it is that it, it, it better addresses those period, those potential gray or weird areas where you're a member of an organization than the other draft does um, and, and helps separate that. I like the idea of having the, the ethics board because it, move some of the policing out of the body that can help de-escalate if there are any potential issues. Um, not with us, but I've seen it in other communities where it can get pretty hot when you're policing yourself. So um, those are some things that I like about this version. And that's all. Thanks, Zach. Uh, Jamie? Thanks. If I'm permitted to um, address Paul, I read just the very brief notes about the forum on Saturday and saw that there was potentially some discussion about ethics ordinances in general. I don't know if any of that discussion would be relevant to share with council or if it is not. 
Uh, well, I'll just get it. They, John Hansen said, because uh, it was brought up about an ethics ordinance in another community. And uh, he said, well, it, actually, it was not another community, another entity in a city here, and that's the school board and the ethics policy and information they've been talking about. And John interrupted and said, yes, and Paul, he, I was the only council member there. Uh, and so I just gave a brief explanation of the, what we had gone through and what the reasons were uh, best I could, Jamie, to get your points across and uh, said that we would be dealing with it at this meeting. So okay. if there's other people in that audience that were there and want to speak, they have to do that on their own. But it was not an appeal by me for to bring people here. It was just an explanation of the question that John asked me. And I think I did a good, I think I did a good job explaining what had gone forward. So yeah. Gotcha, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yep, no problem. And, and there was no comments by anyone after that that I remember. Okay, well, this is good. Let's, uh, I think that we should get in front of the boards and the attorney and then get back to us so we can do our next step, which would be setting the public hearing. Um, is there any further council comments on the what motion that's been made or the, or the version of the motion that's in place? What, what attorney would we be dealing with with this? Or probably Scott Munzel. Who? Scott Munzel. Scott Munzel, okay, thank you. For me, this is not my per my preference, but I'm willing to wait, move along, and to see what the community has to say. But I preferred the other one, and I thought that that's what we had said as a group. Um, I kind of thought I something that would define the ability to do community service and um, not be cons that not be considered a conflict. But that's a minor point. Uh, or it's minor that I'm the only, if I'm the only one, but that is not my favorite. Okay. Anyone else want to speak at this time? Okay, Ms. Jones, let's uh, call the vote to uh, select the ordinance on page 63 for the one that we want our city attorney to review and the other boards and commissions to look at. Okay, Griffin. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Hubbard. Yes. Aram. Yes. Cousins. Yes. Keo. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, that's good. We got that moving again. I appreciate that. Uh, that carries. Uh, down to item L1 under new business. Consideration of a resolution for a new on-premise club liquor license for Encore Theater on page 77 of the packet, starting on page 77 of the packet. I'd like to make that motion. Okay, motion by Cousins. Thank I'll you all. second. Was it second by Fisher? Yes. Okay, thank you, I broke up a little bit. Okay, motion by Cousins, second by Fisher. Um, any discussion needed or Michelle, i turn this over to you. Jamie, I'm question? Happy. I'm, how about if we wait and see what Jamie's question is before I yep. start? I just yep. want to clarify that it's a motion to recommend approval. I took it as a motion to approve. Yes. Right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that was. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That makes sense. Re recommending that the application be considered for approval by the liquor control commission. Yeah. Yeah. Are you at, are you establishing any conditions on this or just straight approval? So far, none have been. So far, none have been proposed. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Zach? Yep. Uh, just a, a couple of quick questions for the club license. So um, they would still be limited by the hours of operation and use of the, the interior food swag shop with this, correct? Uh, correct. There isn't a specific time element um, <clears throat> during the discussion of the conditional rezoning and, and um, the agreement. It was um, um, the food and um, any type of liquid libation, alcoholic or not, 
would happen an hour before the um, the show, no more than an hour after, and then during intermission, and there would be no um, no outdoor service area, uh, no beverages outside, al alcoholic beverages. Um, it, it, that was just the discussion. It does not specifically provide a time nor limit the amount um, of it being one hour. So those would be things that council would need to address if, if you're concerned. Um, one other question is, would this license trigger the annual review from the, the ordinance we adopted um, with the old bowling alley a couple of years ago? Yes, it would still fall under that same. All right, I'm all set, thank you. Okay, uh, Donna? Yeah, um, Michelle, are there things that you can guide us that you think are really important that we include um, for this? Just to make sure that there is no um, alcoholic beverages outside. Um, um, <clears throat> It, we're kind of in a little um, space saver right now. This is coming in before the um, before the Encore Theater coming in. They will be asking for an amendment to their conditional rezoning. Um, there's some things that they don't want to um, have to do uh, per the, the approved site plan. That, um, th that they would like changed in the, um, on the plan and in the agreement. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm meeting with, um, with Dan and Frank from um, McFate tomorrow to get all the details on that. Is there any advantage to us then to postpone until we? I don't have a super big concern that it should be postponed, Donna. Um, um, I don't want to put anything, our perception out in the community that we did somebody a favor and we didn't even, you know, I'm always wanting to be careful that we do portray us out. We are honest about what we do. I want people to know that. The, um, for a club license, the Liquor Control Commission has some pretty strict um, requirements. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so alcoholic beverages can't be served to just anyone. You have to be a member. Um, like the Ark and, um, oh, there was another theater. Michigan um, Theater. Yes, Michigan. thank you, the Michigan Theater. They have club licenses, but they also have memberships. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, um, one of the things that they do is um, if someone comes to a, a show and they are not a member, um, but they want to have a beverage that's alcoholic, the ARC and the Michigan Theater let them know, hey, are you a member? If not, you need to join. And, mm -hmm. and they literally will sign someone up at that point. Um, now, a member can bring guests. <clears throat> and when that happens, the member can purchase beverages for their guests, but they also have to sign a, uh, a, a log or a book. Okay. The, the, the guests don't sign it. Yes, um, the members have to. Got it. Um, so, one more, yeah, one more question. Planning Commission, what were they saying? Planning Commission doesn't... Uh, they didn't hear... They don't get the um, liquor control or liquor right. license requests. Pretty, uh, yeah, I remember the form. It's just council. Okay, thank yeah, you. Just council. <clears throat> Michelle, do you think we should define the hour? Um, I don't an think it would hurt. An hour I don't before, think it would an hour hurt. after? I don't think it would hurt, but I also know that also recognize that with them coming in for the um, amendment to the rezoning, um, it's something that you could do there as well. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the Liquor Control Commission's resolution. You still, you have control one way or the other. And my suggestion would be whatever makes council the most hap the most comfortable Either way would, would work. I'm willing to do it tonight, Paul. If you are, I'm also willing to wait. I would assume, dear, dear Diamond, deal with it. 
uh, as I, a shelf. I think so too. I'm willing to, to modify. Okay, so so then condition one would be uh, that the bar concession area, whatever, is open an hour before performances and up to an hour after. And I'm and intermission. Well, and, and I am not taking away the intermission. However okay. long the intermissions are. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I have comments yeah. on that. Yep. Sorry, I don't need it. Yeah, no, well, I'm getting, I'm getting to that. The, 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 okay. part, the part I was reading was the additional conditions number eight is where it talks about when they'll be available. We would just be putting a time limit there. The bottom of page 83. Why, wow, you can go next. Thank you for waiting. Um, I've uh, dealt with one of these in practice as the uh, house manager for the Performance Network Theater, which was a former professional theater in Ann Arbor. And in terms of the times, I would say that an hour after the performances is impractical for two reasons. Number one, it's never really going to be used after the performances, except for the case of an opening night reception, in which case an hour is not long enough, in my opinion. Um, I don't know how we carve that out, but typically people don't stay after a performance and purchase anything. They do it before they do it intermission and unless there's some specific reception they leave so those that's just my two cents having dealt with this in practice and i'm curious if others have any experience or thoughts on that i i can weigh in just a little from my recollection when it went through site plan review <clears throat> or the conditional rezoning review the hour after was also something that um when concerns were raised about um, the specific use or uses that were proposed, um, the Encore, um, I don't want to say they proposed it, but it was sort of an outline of what they would like. So well, that, yeah, if they feel that that's enough time, I just, in my experience, it was always a little <laughs> bit longer than that. And I'd hate to have them going outside of what's allowed just because people are hanging out. Mm -hmm. after a particularly <laughs> exciting or good opening night, you know? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Uh, Zach? Yeah, I was going to throw an hour and a half spaghetti on the wall. An hour sounds awfully, awfully tight. Okay. Donna, Paul, good with an hour and a half? I'm good with an hour and a half. I've been, I was just going to say I've been to many opening nights and closing nights and uh, you know, that's the time when that could be a problem when, it, you know, the, the actors who have been here in the city for over a week, most cases, a week and a half, uh, they, they, you know, people want to talk to them, they want to interact with them. And uh, that may, hour may, you know, by the time they get cleaned up, get their regular clothes on, get out to, to talk to people. It could be a little tight there with an hour. So an hour and a half would definitely be enough. I'm good with an hour and a half. Okay. So the, the original motion by Cousins and second by Fisher has one condition with the hour and a half pertaining to the hours before the performance and after the performance. Hour and a half, 90 minutes. Jamie? Yeah, I just wanted to confirm as well. I think that's sufficient based on your experience, 90 minutes. I mean, I think it's, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I, you know, I wouldn't mind two hours, but if everybody else is comfortable with an hour and a half, I think they'll make that work. Okay. I think, I think going back to Michelle's comment, there was some concern when they, when they indicated they were going to have a bar as to how late people would be actually on the property lead, leading to interaction and noise as opposed to going home. So I think, you know, it, it's okay if we show a little bit of restraint with it too. Mm -hmm. You know, let them ask for it if it needs to be longer based upon future. If it doesn't work, have them, they can always come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All sounds fine to me. Thanks. Okay. Any other comments on this topic? Uh, <coughs> Were Somebody you guess? also adding the condition about no alcohol beverages outside of the building? Yes. Yeah. That's what yeah. I thought I was doing. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's condition also too. Okay. Very good. In the events that I've been there at the Encore Theater, uh, when they have had anything after that, 
it, it was probably uh, one third at most of the crowd that was there. One third. The rest of the people were just there to see the the show and go home. But there were some that, of course, were uh, involved in the the uh, uh, help of the finances and with the encore, so forth the song that would hang out a little bit longer, want to meet one of the stars, so forth and so on. So it was one of those those uh, those types of things. But rarely anybody stayed an hour. Well, maybe some of the, the actors and actresses did in the back room, but nobody out front did that at all. So hey, we all sent them to the to the pub or to, well, mostly the pub or to the beer grotto. They always <laughs> ever there. So if you want to see them, you can go there and see them as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Paul, for that additional information and thought. Seeing no further hands up, um, Ms. Jones, please call the vote to approve the recommendation to issue the liquor license or the, the liquor commission um, with the two, con two conditions, the time, 90 minutes, and no outdoor serving. Okay. Aram? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Cousins? Yes. Keo. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, new Thank business you. item L2 is consideration of the Urban Wireless Solutions contract. <clears throat> and it looks like we're not sure where we want to go here. So there's two, there's two potential actions. Um, one is to permit or not permit the continued involvement of Doug, and Doug Weber and Urban Wireless Solutions in the review process. Um, and then if council does not permit uh, direct staff to solicit quotes from additional vendors because staff wants to have some type of professional outside uh, consultant, if I could say it that way, to help with these sort of things. Uh, Zach, thank you for jumping out there and putting your hand up. Yeah, before making a motion, I'd, I'd like to ask a quick question of staff. Okay. Um, for whomever is most comfortable answering this, um, whenever there's something new like this, I know it's always a bit of an adventure. Um, how long does staff think that they would need to have consultant assistance when reviewing these applications? Is it a, we get one or two through, we'll be good six months, a year, two years? That's really a good question, Zach. And um, if I had a crystal ball on how the technology is gonna to continue to change, I probably would be able to answer that with some confidence. Um, I think that the two that we've gotten or are getting from Verizon are just the tip of the iceberg, <laughs> um, but not every one of those uh, future potential small cell apps that come in are going to be with, um, have the engineer of Telecat. <clears throat> so um, if it, it, depending on how council feels, um, um, if I need to get a different um, consultant for those applications in which Telecat could be an engineer, um, then staff will work with it that way. What I would, I would say for me personally is I'd be comfortable allowing it to continue for a, a short term, maybe up to a year or something like that, um, so that you guys are gain confidence in, in various abilities because there is benefit to having an existing working relationship. But I can see that um, it would allow greater flexibility um, for Mr. Weber and the city if, if there is a separation in the future. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I guess I would I would make the motion to to permit it the continued involvement for up to a year. Michelle, can you get through reviews in a year? I, I would presume we will, John. Yes. Okay. 
All right, I'm just making sure that that's, I, 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 don't, I don't know either. So I was just asking what your feeling was. I think was. the telecom act says we, or the, the act says we get 45 days. Okay, I was thinking it was much less, but I didn't, couldn't remember, Zach, thanks. I, I do have just a clarifying question. Um, so you would permit the continued involvement, but you're limiting it to a year for right now, correct? Okay, yep. thank you. That's our motion. Okay, so we have a motion by uh, Council Member Michelle's. Is there support? Lacking support, the uh, motion fails. Is there no support? I, I'll second okay. it for purposes of continued discussion, I guess, to get it to a vote. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Okay, so we have a motion by Michelle, second by Griffin. To permit the continued involvement for up to a year. Okay, discussion? Zach, you still have your hand up if you want the floor. Oh, no, I was just curious what, what other folks were thinking. I, yeah. I'm comfortable again with some continued, but um, having some sort of a time limit what staff gains competency. That was all. I try to split the baby, I guess. A lot of six Yep, Jamie? So uh, clarifying question. The particular contract is between the city and Verizon. So there's a contract with, with Mr. Weber, uh, you know, as the consulting. And then what is the specific contract in question that involves Telecad? Is it with Verizon and then Verizon happens to have a contract with Telecad or is it between the city and Telecad? The Verizon uses Telecad as their engineer. So I'm presuming that they have some contractual relationship. But it's the city is directly contracting with Verizon? Or no, the city permitting, or is permitting to Verizon or the- Verizon is coming in with an application. Telecad is their engineer. And Mr. Weber and his company, Urban Wireless Solutions, works with Telecad, but not with Verizon. It would be a permit to Verizon, not a permit to Telecad. Correct. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Oh, sorry, Jim. I was just going to say when I was thinking about this, I was looking back to the conflict of interest ordinance that I had, you know, I'm in favor of advancing and, you know, trying to think about specific provisions of that and the extent to which they provide direction here. And so I'm looking specifically at page 67 of the packet where it talks about, um, so G no public servant. And in this case, in this ordinance, public servant includes consultants. Basically says they shall not participate um, in any of these things or other regulation or supervision relating to any entity or, or organization with which the public servant is directly involved, where directly involved means is, you know, part of a decision-making uh, capacity, which, so he is not part of a decision-making capacity for Verizon or by whom the public servant is employed, he's not employed by Verizon, or in which the public servant has directly or indirectly a financial, personal, or beneficial interest. Uh, so I think there's room for interpretation there to figure out the extent to which Mr. Weber has a direct or indirect financial, personal, or beneficial interest in Verizon gaining this permit from the city via his relationship with Telecad. So I would be making a decision based on that question. Um, also, if you look at F based above, um, just scrolling up the last sentence in F, so still on page 67, where it says, this shall not prohibit a part-time elected or appointed city official consultant or contractor from engaging in private employment or business on his or her own time as a private citizen and where city business is not involved. So then that kind of makes me think about um, Zach and his employment at OHM, or no, CWA. CWA. Um, and have I? What's that? I haven't been traded, have I? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of did. Um, so then just wondering, is there any analogy there where, um, like, can I create any analogy there? But I don't know that I can because we work more directly with CWA than we are necessarily with Telecad. So Telecad is you know, sort of one degree removed. Um, and I don't know that 
by being a consultant to Telecad, that he would have a direct or indirect financial, personal or beneficial interest in whether or not Verizon gets the permit from the city. Maybe somebody would say that he does because if Verizon doesn't get it, then they're not gonna you know, pass the money on to Telecad. I guess I'm just saying like, that's how I would think about it. I'd be curious to know if that's what seems relevant to other people and what, if it, what their answer to that question is. Uh, Jamie, my, my opinion is that this is not a conflict mm -hmm. and that, that, again, going back to the very, very first rule of anything is disclosure of what's going on. Um, this guy is a technical expert in a field and he has more than one client. It's obvious that in this case, he's working for municipalities in one state, i.e. Michigan and Dexter, and he's chosen in other states, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Kentucky to consult with, you know, the engineers that are helping the companies who are trying to get us to buy phones and use mobile service and all that stuff. Um, I think he's being completely above board by disclosing it. And I don't see the conflict given that his interaction with Telecad is in the other states. Now, if, if Telecad starts doing work, you know, on contracts in Michigan and he's representing Telecad in Michigan and they're coming to Dexter, I think it gets a lot clearer to me. But otherwise, I think this is okay. Um, I'm willing to go along with Zach's one year, although I just think in a year we're going to be uh, right back here with the same question, probably approving it again, assuming nothing has changed. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's how I feel about it. I don't see there's a conflict here. I think he's completely doing the right thing by disclosing it. Wah, thanks for waiting. Yep, thanks. I guess, you know, I would just echo some of that where, I mean, I was thinking a lot of that actually where this is a highly specified field. We need somebody to help as we move forward with this. And I would only have a problem with it if he started doing contracts in the state of Michigan. And I would hope that if that happened, he would let us know and then, you know, he wouldn't be involved with this anymore. But up until that point, I don't see a conflict. Sanam? Yeah, coming from a technology perspective, one year is, is not enough, um, I think things sometimes move very slowly and sometimes very fast. So in terms of technology, they can move very fast and his expertise can be really used. And in the light of what Sean and um, Jamie, uh, Sean and Wass said about um, his contracts not being in the state of Michigan, I think his benefit to the city of Dexter is uh, much more so. Um, I would um, either suggest that we extend that one year to maybe two years um, or to just remove that. And if at any point we feel that the, um, there is an issue and we feel that things have changed, then um, we will change our relationship. I'll accept that Thank from you. the end if the chair repeats it for the body. Okay, let me, Jamie, will you accept the friendly amendment as well? Uh, sure. The, the difficulty in repeating that, Zach, is I'm not sure if she wants it two years or it to go away. Which do you prefer, Sanam? I would prefer that it would go away um, if everybody is really wanting um, a timeline. I would say one is not. Okay, so Zach, do you still want a timeline? Yep. Okay, then do you no, accept no, the two? I'm comfortable you, you, with what they said, with what she said, no timeline. You are comfortable with no timeline? Yep. Okay, Jamie, are you comfortable removing that? Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure, always. Before agreeing to that. So my understanding is there are kind of two, two relationships or two areas in which he's consulting. There's sort of a general agreement where he's providing general consulting services on this topic generally. And I think what is in front of us now is whether or not he's able to consult on the specific permit being submitted by Verizon, which has a tie to Telecad. So I think they're two, to me, they're two separate things. And so I'm fine with his, you know, this general relationship can stay as long as it's beneficial to the city. How long should he be able to comment on an application that involves Telecad? I do feel comfortable 
limiting that. Um, because I imagine this permit will get wrapped up and unless Telecat is the only engineer that any uh, telecommunications provider is gonna be contracting with, it's not necessarily a given that Telecat is gonna be coming you know, uh, in the next permit. So I feel like this is specific to this permit. I feel comfortable having a time limit because it's this one permit right now. And, and the general, his ability to give us advice generally still remains, it's a separate question. So I don't know if that was clear to everybody or, or if it was and you still don't like the timeline. I still would prefer no timeline unless he starts doing that contract with Telecat in, in Michigan and then we can revisit. Yeah, I, I, Jamie, I guess the, I guess what I'm confused by is that if, if all of this is going to happen really fast and another permit application gets back in, do we then have to have another action item for the next one when I think what's being suggested is we we state to Mr. Weber that if, if his relationship in Michigan changes some way, he's got to disclose that to us and then we could change it. But up until then, there's no timeline. You know, we, we want him to help us. Okay. Am I able to... Yeah. I don't know if I can withdraw my second and somebody else can second. Yeah, well, I, well, yeah, yeah, I, was, I agree with what you're saying. I, I, we, I don't, if you don't want to support the motion, that's okay. Then we, we would just vote on it. And if it, if it passes, it passes. If it fails, it fails. The original motion was with, you know, one year. So if I don't support the amendment, it stays on until it's voted. That's what we should do. I mean, yeah. The, the friendly amendment is really a quicker way to not vote on the original motion and then make a whole new second one. We kind of do it as a right. a matter of, of discourse, but the, the, the clean way would be, there's a motion on the table to approve his permitted use for up to one year and we, we can vote on that. And then if, if that doesn't pass and somebody wants to make another motion different than that, that can be brought back up afterwards. I understand. Okay. Okay, that's my preference. So I'll keep my original second, second to the okay. original motion. All right. So the original motion is all that's out there. Uh, Zach, I believe what I'm repeating is that you moved, uh, City Council moved to, to permit the continued involvement of Doug Weber and Urban Wireless Solutions in the permit review process uh, for a period of one year from the, the date of this approval. Yep. Okay. So motion by Michelle, second by Griffin. Any other comments on that? Or can I call the vote on that to see where that takes us? Yeah, she says she's not ready to go. She oh. wanna watch TV. Okay. Okay, uh, Ms. Jones, please call the vote. Okay. This is again up, up to one year with, with one year for one year. Okay. And if this fails, we're going to go ahead and, and we're gonna go back and um have a second motion well if somebody wants to make one yeah if it fails yep okay yep. okay Ms. Jones? i'm ready i'm just getting a lot of yep. I, can i say one thing before you call carol the okay. dilemma that i have is that i'm supportive of this and so if i vote this no i don't want it to i don't want to be i'm like you jamie i don't want to be not supportive or supportive of what it something I don't want. So that's why I'm asking. That's why I was asking if we that would be the next step. So I'll take my chances again. Well well okay so the, the other way of doing this is we could somebody can make a motion to amend the motion and somebody can second it. All right. And so somebody could amend the original motion, we get a second on it, and then we all vote on the amendment and then that changes the motion that we vote on. There's okay. two ways to get to the same place. I prefer the second then. The way you're doing what you just described you prefer that somebody makes a motion to amend the motion yes i do okay is there somebody that wants to make a motion to amend the original motion i think yes Fisher does what's that Zach? yes i think Fisher does no okay, Ms. Fisher? Adam just said yes oh all right, so, all right well, i'm sorry i need I, I don't see any hands i couldn't tell sorry sonam go ahead yeah, I will uh, make a motion to amend the original motion to remove the timeline. And I'll second. Okay, so motion by 
Arab, second by Fisher, to remove the timeline from the original motion. Okay, any discussion on the motion to amend? Okay, seeing none, Ms. Jones, you're now calling the vote to amend the original motion to remove the timeline. Okay. Cousins. Yes. Arab. Yes. Hubbard. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Griffin. No. Keo. Yes. Okay, so the amendment passes, which means the new motion is what's shown on the bottom of page 89. City Council moves to permit the con continued involvement of Doug Weber and Urban Wireless Solutions in the permit review process for applications submitted by really is by Verizon slash or by Telecad involving Telecad. Um, that's the original motion. No timeline. Is there any additional discussion needed? I'm not seeing hands. Okay, Ms. Jones, please call the vote on that motion. Okay. Arab? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Griffin? No. Cousins? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Keo? Yes. All right, thank, thank you, you everyone. We haven't, we haven't done a, a, an amend the motion thing in a while, so that was kind of fun. <laughs> so we are now on to, um, so uh, Michelle, just thank Mr. Weber for his uh, continued um, disclosure of things to us and uh, let us know how the relationship and how he's doing as a consultant, so. Will do, thank you very much. Okay, we got that clarified. New business item L3, consideration of uh, the third amendment to the purchase agreement for 3515 Broad Street. I'll move the third amendment to the purchase agreement for 3515 Broad Street. Support, okay. Cousins. Okay, moved by Michelle's, second by Cousins. Okay, Justin, anything to go over? Sure, so um, uh, most of the information is included in the memo um, is uh, Sean indicated. Um, we have a closing date set for uh, Wednesday, and I think we're looking at, at 2 p.m. Um, leading up to this, uh, we uh, completed the phase two, and um, ASTI uh, provided us a, a, an update as soon as they um, heard from their um, lab that uh, they didn't find what they were looking for, but they found uh, two other things. Um, well, one being uh, a high level of, of uh, TCE um, that was more than 60 feet away from the building and a high level of arsenic, which was more than 90 uh, feet away from the building in the locations that they uh, did their soil borings. Um, since that report came out, or so since we, we were notified of that by ASTI, uh, ASTI let us know that it looks like the levels of arsenic that they found um, we aren't going to have to test for. They, they fall below their um, Eagles testing limits. Um, at least that's, that's, that's the way it, it stands right now. Um, in either case, uh, ASTI was recommending uh, additional uh, indoor air quality testing uh, through um, a sub slab soil testing process. Um, and uh, when we uh, engage the sellers and, and let them know this information. Um, we negotiated with them a little bit and came to um, an, uh, an agreement that um, they would reduce the purchase price by $14,000, which would cover um, a portion of the additional testing. And then they would also put $20,000 into escrow, which would cover, uh, or, uh, cover a portion of um, any rem remediation system that could be necessary if they found the materials that they were testing for. So, <laughs> which is which is consistent with what we described as a potential at the last meeting, I believe. Correct. Yep. So, so that that was that was um, uh, in accordance with with what we discussed at, at the last meeting. Um, that's what we pitched to the sellers, and um, 
that's what we ended up agreeing on. Okay, questions for Justin. Oh, Zach? Yep, just a, a, a per, perhaps persnickety question on here. If the, uh, the new remediation is more than 40,000, we pay more than half. And if it's less than 40,000, they pay more than half. Is that basically how the risk settles here? Or is the idea that if it's 30,000, we go halvesies with them? Um, so we, we, we discussed go, going halvesies. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Okay, seeing no other hands, Ms. Jones, please call the vote to approve the third amendment to the 3515 Broad Street Purchase Agreement. Okay. Hubbard. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Arab. Yes. Cousins. Yes. Griffin. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Keogh. Yes. Thank you, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Justin, for you and Scott working on that. Uh, new business item L4, discussion of potential city council discussion topics and the timeline associated with those. Dustin, I'll turn this over to you. Sure, so we had uh, discussed um, putting together a timeline um, for um, fire conversation. And as a part of that, we were also looking at, um, we have a number of uh, other topics um, that are either time sensitive or um, were discussed as part of uh, the goals and objectives work sessions that were held at the start of the year. Um, so I took a crack at putting together a rough timeline of some of those conversations. Um, and uh, you know this is this is open for for conversation. Um, and this is just a, a rough uh, set of initial thoughts on um, how these topics might um, fall out. Um, using only uh, regular city council meetings, um, not adding in any any additional work sessions mm -hmm. or, or work session dates outside of regular city council meetings. So I don't know if anybody has any thoughts or any questions on on the timeline. Uh, Jamie. Yeah, thanks. As I said in my email to Justin, I loved this. Uh, this is exactly what I meant. I think earlier in January when we were at a work session and I said, is there a way we can sort of pre-populate agendas in the future so we know that we're gonna get to things and when. So I know for me, sometimes when I'm waiting the agenda for meetings, I'm like, what are we gonna be talking about this week? Um, so I'm, I'm happy to see this. I don't right now have any immediate thoughts on you know, where things have fallen on this layout. I think if, if other people like this, including it, like I mentioned in my email, including this as part of your report or having it somewhere in the packet so that we see on a rolling basis what's coming up for the next six months or whatever the lead time is, that we are constantly reminded in the packet. I think that would be helpful to me. Um, I think one other thing I threw out there is because I was also going back through the budget document as part of, you know, for the consent agenda and you know, we've all those goals and objectives in there. And one of them is talking about engaging the public and talking about other means for public participation. And I think in our budget document, that one did have a time specific goal of something, you know, for this, this current fiscal year. I couldn't find other goals that were sort of time limited to the current fiscal year, although I'm sure they're all like generally making progress within the fiscal year. So I would be interested in um, seeing something, a, a conversation, a conversation about public participation, whether it's via surveys or um, something else just generally. Um, I know some years ago, the city had a um, citywide survey on, you know, omnibus, you know, a variety of topics, something like that could be cool. I just want to make sure given that it was mentioned that we were going to do it in this fiscal year that we do get to it this fiscal year and anything else that was mentioned in the budget. Um, those are some initial thoughts. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie. Zach? Uh, just a, a little detailed question. I know it's a bit advanced. Um, if we wrap up January 10th fire station and everyone's happy with what we're doing, what would be the earliest ballot that that would go on? That a I would I would have to look. I I I think you might still be able to make it into May. 
probably probably pretty tight, right? Yeah. I think the deadline for May is usually February, if I remember Zach. All right. It's I can't I don't know the date exactly, but I think it's a February date. That was it. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, Justin, good job putting this together. Good job laying it out. Um, it, you know, things can, if for whatever reason, things have to move a little bit because of your schedule on something or you see something moving, just give us advance notice so we can all be aware of it. And uh, this already reflects the conflict of interest that we, uh, I anticipate us setting a public hearing for on September 13th and that we referenced in a prior item. So, uh, all good work. Okay, to move on to L5. Uh, Justin, I'll turn this one over to you again. It's discussion of, uh, of a guidance document for in-person meetings, which we have said we would like to start starting on September 13th. Sure. Um, so uh, as we're doing research, you know, kind of thinking through what it's gonna take to get back to in-person meetings, um, there's, you know, a couple of points. Um, one, and as we discussed earlier, um, the location, and it seems like it's city council's preference to utilize 3515 broad as um, option number one. And if that's unavailable, then moving to uh, St. Andrews. Um, number two, kind of how, how the meetings might, might be held. So um, mm -hmm. And speaking with the city attorneys, um, they indicated that um, <coughs> through the end of the fiscal year or through the end of end of the year, uh, December 31, um, we can hold hi hybrid meetings as long as um, the county maintains its state of emergency, um, allowing those council members who um, feel inclined or, or those, those boards and committee members who feel inclined to be able to participate remotely. Um, a lot, and in, in developing that process, I actually, I talked with, with, um, Patrick Joes from OHM, um, to think through how we might actually, you know, hold those meetings. And, um, he, he thought that we might actually be able to use the microphones that we used at the senior center as, um, audio inputs. Um, we would just have to purchase an audio mixer. That would then, you know, feed into my computer and then feed into Zoom. So then, all of council or the boards and committees wouldn't actually have to call in on their phone or use their own uh, electronic devices. Um, we could have one source of, of audio input and one source of video. If I, you know, put a uh, a, a video cam um, on my on my computer pointed at at the board. <laughs> Um, the, the, the one question that I, I think we did have for council is, um, what council's expectations were, uh, with regard to, um, coronavirus mitigation me measures. Um, so, you know, the, the, the kind of what, what we've heard over the last couple of months is, you know, if you're vaccinated, you aren't obligated to wear a mask. If you aren't vaccinated, wear a mask. Um, do we take temperatures at the door? Um, you know, what what sorts of measures is our council looking to implement as part of um, a return to in-person meetings? And that's what I, what I wanted to, to throw out to, to council. Justin, Justin, just, just, oh, Paul, you want to go ahead? No, I just said the silence is deafening. <laughs> well, well, what I was going to, what I was going to say, um, you know, the, 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 um, the meetings that we have had in the past, you know, rarely have a lot of people at them. 
So, I mean, if you did want to impose, maybe impose is the wrong word, but if you did want to require a, a temperature test, um, you know, that would not necessarily be a cumbersome process unless it's, I mean, the only problem with that is it, you know, assumes everybody gets there at roughly the same time and what happens when somebody enters the meeting in the middle or 10 minutes late or, you know, there, there could be an interruption with something like that. Um, so, but I don't, I don't have a problem if people want to do that of, of saying that's what we're going to do as a protocol. Uh, but it, it does it does have, present a few logistical things. I have to do that every day before I go to work. I have to take my temperature and report it. The, the method that they use now is very quick. I mean, it, yeah. if, you have, if you have a, if you have a quick scanning thermometer, yes. Aim it at your forehead or whatever, how do you do it? Yep. Sanam? Yeah, thank you. Um, so the, the only problem with temperature is that um, one could still um, have, you know, be asymptomatic and, um, and still um, spread the virus. Um, I'm personally more in favor of um, reinforcing the whether you're vaccinated or if you are not or you prefer not to share that information to wear a mask. Um, and anybody else who is more comfortable to wear a mask also, or would prefer to wear a mask to do so, that that's given. But um, that with, with with the clarification on HIPAA, that um, that question can be asked and people can show proof of vaccination. Um, I'm more in favor of that, especially as this Delta variant is a spreading um, and spreading fast. Um, I'm also would not be surprised if more mask um, requirements are coming. We just got one from the University of Michigan that we all have to wear masks again uh, as of 11th. So um, I, I would say that, yes, I, if they're not <clears throat> comfortable to showing their, their proof of vaccination, that's totally fine. They can wear masks. That would be my preference. Okay. I'm okay with that. Jamie? Yep. Uh, yeah, I was, yeah, I was also going to mention the UMish just recently announced that uh, masks are required of everybody. I, my preference, if, if there are going to be masks, um, which may be a prudent thing, is that they be required of everybody. And, you know, you know, we could even still impose the social distancing. I, my, my preference is if there is some requirement that it be of everybody. Mm -hmm. And if there's going to be no requirement, then it applies to everybody, I guess. Well, it, it, it is a requirement, right? I mean, the requirement is if, you, if, you, if you're not vaccinated, you wear a mask. That's, that would apply to everybody. If masks are going to be required of anybody, I think they should be required of everybody. Okay, well, that's different then, right? It, then, then, well, so then, that's, then that, that's like ignoring the step of whether you've proven your vaccination or not, right? Right. I don't want it to be contingent on that. That's okay. That's, a, but it's, but it was, it was, it was, it was, you were implying that it wasn't fair to everyone or it wasn't being imposed upon everybody. The requirement to present the card, and if you aren't vaccinated, wear a mask would apply, could apply to everybody as well, right? Well, if, right, if my original statement wasn't clear, I think I've clarified it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Justin's thrown these out here as guidance. Um, we can, uh, if, if we want to set some protocol, you know, different than the guidance, I guess we have to figure out how to do that or make a motion. Or bring, we can bring it back at the next meeting and do that too, just so we get it in place. Yeah, wow. I concur with. I can. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. No, go ahead, Donna. I was just going to say, right. I just concur with Sanam. I think that's the way to go. Um, just do it. Whoever have everybody do it if that's what we need to do. Um, I know that we just had a meeting for the senior center board, and that's we had to do that. Go back to masks. So. I think there's more coming, quite frankly. 
Yeah. <coughs> okay. Uh, wow. Um, yeah, I guess my input is just that, yeah, I think things are still changing. And so I don't necessarily know that we need to put anything like in stone right now and have, we're just going to, I think we might just have to change it later. Um, but yeah, also the, I mean, the city of Ann Arbor today and all of their municipal buildings went back to being fully masked as of today. So, you know, I mean, I, I would prefer that as well, but I don't, you know, I'm also fine with waiting as we aren't meeting in person before the next meeting and, you know, things could still change. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Justin, maybe you can bring this back again and keep us updated on what the latest, uh, you know, information is out there and we'll go from there. I can do that. Okay, uh, new business item L6, consideration of traffic control order policy. This is an updated version of what we saw last time. It is. I move we adopt the traffic control order policy. Thank you, Zach. For Cousins. Second by Cousins. Any discussion or Justin, you want to point out anything that's changed? Um, the, the only things that have changed are the items that we talked about at the last meeting. Um, if uh, if a TCO request is generated by someone outside of uh, the city or um, uh, emergency services, then um, it go, goes to council first before uh, proceeding with a um, with a review. Okay, Ms. Griffin? Yep, I, I had a couple of questions that I guess I did not get in my email to Justin. Uh, so on page 105, uh, under the heading TCO review and approval process, where it says the city council decides if a particular individual is to be appointed to the office of traffic engineer or if the office will vest with the city manager. Is, it, is my reading correct that this does um, vest the office with the city manager? That's correct. Yeah. So um, the the city manager is is the default. Um, it can it can be updated to appoint someone else if if that's um, what city council wanted to do. Um, okay. Yeah. I guess something about that language wasn't clear to me. It, it, to me, I read it as like we needed to make a decision before it was like. Is there a definitive statement in there where it? It says that the city, I mean, later on it's sort of inferred because then it says the city manager shall do all these things. I don't know if that was unclear to anybody else. Well, what, what's, what's interesting about that sentence is we don't actually have an office of traffic engineer, right? I mean, we, we, ha we have a, we have a public works super a public works and we do have a street foreman, but what, what Justin's saying is that the, the, the duties reflected as the office of the traffic engineer are, are essentially being vested in the city manager position at this point. It's not like we've hired somebody to actually or created an office. Am I saying that right, Justin? That's yeah, that's correct. And and the city manager can delegate the duties, but not the responsibility of, of the office of the so so like unless like, someone else is officially appointed as as the city engineer. Like for, for example, some of the duties you're appointing would be to, to have, have OHM or whoever the acting city engineer is, you know, do the, the studies or whatever. Correct. Whereas if we had, if we had an, if we actually had an official office, you could have a, a you know, in-house engineer that would be responsible for that. Correct. And, and I, I believe that the, the, you know, office of traffic engineer um, is likely built into state law. If I had to guess, um, and so you know, if we had our own engineering department, um, we might appoint you know the the chief engineer as the um, traffic engineer, for example. But um, since we don't have an on staff engineer, uh, that office li lies with the city manager. Okay. Correct, Jamie. Uh, okay, so then I think that wording is fine. If it didn't trip anybody else up. 
um, point one underneath that where um, the request for a traffic control device or other traffic regulatory requests, blah, 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 such requests may be submitted by residents, businesses, city staff, or public safety, parents, Washington County Sheriff's Office. Should the public, should that read public safety services providers below in 3A, it says, um, is it 3A or does it say this? Somewhere else it mentions public safety services providers. So I just don't know if that noun phrase should be consistent yeah. throughout. Yeah, it's in, in the leading sentence oh, of three. three, it says public safety services providers. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to yeah. be consistent. Okay. Yep, good catch. And that's it for me, thanks. Sure. Uh, Donna, no, wait. I just took my hand down. Oh, okay. I was gonna say it was there. <laughs> it was, you're right, that is correct. Any other comments on the TCO policy? Okay, Ms. Jones, please call the vote to approve the policy with those uh, couple small changes. Okay, Fisher? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Cousins? Yes. Rab? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Keo. Yes. Motion carries. We are down to council comments. Uh, we'll let our student representative, Alex Gilbert, go first this evening. I have no comments tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alex, for attending this evening. Um, Mr. Cousins. Nothing this evening. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Griffin. Yes, I want to thank uh, Ms. Donaisky, if, if I pronounce that correctly, um, for sharing her comments and for um, working to gather public input and share that. I know what it's like to be the point person for a group of concerned citizens, and so I appreciate you coming to both Planning Commission and City Council. Generally speaking um, about that concern, I've been recently appointed to the Street Subcommittee, so I would be in favor of re-looking at the continuation of Baker to Central. Um, and I think it was interesting to consider how now the border to border connection, sort of that trail and the truck route now sort of overlap. So I would be in favor of resurrecting that conversation. Um, thanks. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Uh, Wah? Um, just one thing. Uh, I don't think we're all gonna be together again before uh, Sodom welcomes the new addition to her family. So I just wanna say that I hope that goes well and. Looking forward to meeting um, your son. Thank you. Thank you, Ah. Uh, Zach? I have nothing today. Okay. Uh, Sanam? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and thanks, Wa. Um, that's what um, I was going to mention that um, I'm glad I, I lasted through the entire meeting tonight. I wasn't sure if that can happen. <laughs> um, but um, hopefully um, our son will arrive sometime in the next week or so. And um, with that, I'll probably miss our um, August 23rd meeting. And I look forward to hopefully see everybody in September meeting. Thank you. And last but not least, Ms. Fisher. Yeah, I think some of the comments that Jamie made regarding the um, taking another look at the streetscape makes sense i i don't know i it having been through it the last time and how divided the community was it's it's a tough one and i think that we regardless of it being tough i think we need to discuss it so we can't just take and move the truck route here and then these people will be distressed and put it by my house and i don't want it either and then put over by the school and the school can't have it i don't know what else to do other than to look at a dramatic change, so. Yep. And don't yeah. put me on that committee. What's that? Don't, don't put you on that committee. committee. Uh, I've, I've done it once. Chicken, chicken. <laughs> I am, I am, that was awful. I remember. You, I can send you in again. You've had time to rejuvenate. Yeah, right, okay. We'll send you right back through there. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> There's a Some lot of to look people are, are deceased, so it may be a little easier, but I'm not sure. <laughs> well, it's a good point. <laughs> well, there's a lot to look at there. We just signed the contract accepting 
three or four hundred thousand dollars of money to, for the improvement of the truck route, consistent with the engineering, you know, design and such. So we've got a lot to think about on that topic. Indeed. And and Donna, your point, you know, your point about if you move it from A to B, um, you know, we just put bike lanes all up and down Central also, mm -hmm. and the, and the goal you know, the goal of adding them on, on broad was to make not just central safe, but broad safe. Um, so there's a whole bunch of things that are being done with safety in mind as well. I, I think that uh, Paul's comments um, about give, getting some enforcement out there I agree with uh, that. Ma 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 make a lot of sense in the short term because uh, this isn't gonna change overnight. Right. And, um, you know, I don't even know what it would, <laughs> if we had changed it to not be a truck route today, I don't know what our contract with MDOT would even say or do because mm -hmm. we, we only got the funding because, or, you know, it, it classifies as one of our primary roads and is eligible for that funding through the tip. And, um, like I said, there's a whole mouthful of things to try to think about here, but at the foremost is that you know we are a small portion of the, the overall truck route that exists in Washtenaw County. And um, that doesn't mean we can't control how it goes through the city, but there has been a lot of long-term planning that's put it, you know, where it is and why and improvements that are being made because of those decisions. So uh, I guess we just need to think about all that. Uh, is there anyone in the audience under non arranged that would like to speak at 914? Seeing none, I will seek a motion for adjournment and thank everybody for participating in the meeting this evening. So moved. Support. Moved by Fisher. Support by Michelle's. All those Happy. in favor? Aye. 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 Happy Dexter Days. Happy Dexter Days, everyone. Look forward to seeing you around the town. Night, night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.